Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am in week four of the A to Z Horror Reading Challenge created by John at Books of Blood. In this challenge, John created a number of alphabetical prompts based on themes for readers to read horror stories or horror books based on whatever theme in the alphabet they are reading. And I have done 10 stories. And at week four, I'm going to be starting with P is for psychological. And the story I read was Master of the Hounds by Algis Budris. And this is a story of a New York couple visiting New Jersey. Now this is in New Jersey in um, 1940s, 1950s. So it is a not highly developed New Jersey yet. And they're going to this way out farmhouse to get away from city life and um, just sort of relax. They went through a real estate agent who went to the, sent them to this house. And in this house, they have a next door neighbor who is supposedly just the caretaker, but he's more than just a caretaker. He is a very famous military officer who was a leader of a prison camp, leading the prisoners for his enemies. And this man, this colonel, owns two dogs, two Doberman pinchers, who will obey his every order. And this man, psychologically, captures and torments this husband and wife because he's a bit of a nutcase. This, this novella was filmed as the movie To Kill a Clown. It starred Alan Alda as the psychopathic military colonel before he joined the cast of M.A.S.H. And I remember seeing this movie on television and thinking, how could Hawkeye be such a freaking nutcase? Because this colonel is a nutcase. And what he does with his dogs can be terrifying. S is for supernatural. And we have an anthology here, Dark Gods by T E D. Klein. Now, Klein was a phenomenon in the early 80s. He was the rising star of horror fiction. And he wrote a great novel called Ceremonies, which was based on one of his novellas. And he has this collection of four short novellas, which is just a fabulous collection. Until recently, it was out of print and you would have to pay a lot of money to get this collection. It has recently been republished, and I highly recommend that you go to Amazon or your, your preferred bookseller and order this collection if you do not have it already. And the story that I read was Children of the Kingdom. It is narrated by a man living in New York City in the mid 70s and he has a grandfather problem and his problem is settled by putting his grandfather into a nursing home and in this nursing home the man befriends an old priest who was working on arcane religious lore and attempting to um, republish his lore in as many languages as possible although not officially published. And in his lore, he talks about beings who exist with humanity, but are not humanity. And 
they could be living in New York City, in the subways, where it is always dark. But they do not come out into the city because the city still has lights. But this is the mid-70s. And if you know your history, New York City experienced a major blackout where everything went dark. And in a dark New York City, what might come out of the subways that could be blind and vicious to humans? Why is for young adult. And I have Bubkiss in that category. I have a huge library, lots of horror short stories, but nothing for young adults. So I'm going to have to skip that letter. But Z is for zombie is something I can do. I have this anthology, The Dead Walk published by Die Monster Die Books. This is a small publisher from Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, it was edited by Vincent Sneed. Now the story I have selected out of here is The Righteous Rise by Robert M. Price. Now Robert M. Price is very well known um, as a theologian and teacher of religious history. He is probably the most well-known biblical scholar who goes for the, the mythical Jesus theory. And that says that um, there was no historical Jesus. It's all invention of the gospels. So if there was a man like that, he says, he would be so far removed from the, the, the gospel sources that it is virtually no connection between the two. And he is an outlier. Most people do say that there was an historical Jesus, but Robert M. Price takes a different view. Now, in his story, it starts off with a scholar talking about a manuscript that has been found, sort of along the lines with um, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And this is a, a narrative from those times from a rabbi. And um, he doesn't want to publish it because he thinks everyone will call it a work of fiction. Now, of course, this is a work of fiction, and it's, it's one of those cutesy little stories that authors sometimes do. But okay, so he's saying that there's this narrative discovered from the times of Jesus. And um, it's a story of a rabbi in hiding. And um, Jesus has just been crucified. And he's hearing stories about that. And of course, if you know the Bible, that there are stories of dead people coming back to life. And that's why it's included in this anthology, because it's not just zombie stories. He says, zombies, revenants, and the living dead. Now, what he does, I won't, I won't tell you the end of the story, because he does something very clever with this. Um, as he was describing the scene of Jesus' crucifixion, he described a scene that says, you know, that just really seemed out of place. And um, I let it slide until the very end of the story. And I'm going, now that is an interesting twist on the life of Jesus. Now, is this a horror story? Kind of. I can see why they wanted to include it in this anthology. It is not a traditional zombie story in any means. And I think it's more of an interest to readers who, who, who like some theology in their fiction to give them things to ponder about. I have finished the A to Z reading horror challenge, but I'm not going to end with that. I'm going to give another plug for lurking in the Dark by R. St. Clair. This is an anthology of short stories written by your fellow 
booktubers. So everyone here, I believe, has a channel of videos that you can watch. And now I have not read the complete anthology. I have read the first five entries. And I am satisfied that this is going to be a good collection. You will start off with a piece of horror poetry. You will then discover a man who cleans up crime scenes. And things on crime scenes can happen. You will then find a man down and out on his luck who may be seeing things that could be monsters. You will find an actor in a low-budget werewolf film who finds that things may be visiting that film set. And finally, you will encounter a serial killer who can't quite stop killing. And then he encounters something when he's out on his hunt. So please, support your fellow booktubers by lurking in the dark.